Thank you very much. How's everybody feeling? Day three, lunchtime. Thanks for coming out. And I really feel like these sessions can go one of two ways. I talk, you try your best to listen, you kind of get bored, and you don't get the, the value that you expected, right? You're here on day three to get ideas and strategies to grow your digital marketing agencies, right? So we don't want that. The other way is I talk passionately about what I have to share, my experience, my expertise. You listen, but we make it a conversation, right? I ask questions, you nod, you raise your hands when I ask you to. And in that, you walk away with the key insights and strategies. You walk away with a clear plan. You guys okay with the second option? Good. So with that, I'd like everyone just to stand up with me real quick. It's lunchtime. Stand up. And then just, just do this right here. Kind of shake your back. You probably haven't done any exercise this whole time. I was taught this by Chet Holmes. When you do this, you kind of bring the, the liquid from your, your spine up into your brain. It helps you think better. Awesome. So thanks for doing that. Stay standing. Stay standing. We're on the agency track, right? So if you run a digital marketing agency, can you remain standing? And if you're not, that's okay, you can sit. And so we're here on this agency track at the, at the Traffic and Conversion Summit to learn, right? How do we serve our clients and get them great results? How do we land clients for ourselves so we can grow a successful business? So with that in mind, how many of you, as you have grown your digital marketing agencies, have done cold calling or set in network meetings? Everybody still standing if that's you? How many of you feel like that's like a great strategy? It works really well. Almost all your business comes from that. You can sit down if that's not the case. All right, so we've got some of you still standing. Here's what I'll say. If you know how to land, you can, you can all sit now. Thank you for, for participating in that. If you can land clients through cold calling, the world is your oyster. It really is because it's the hardest way to land clients. It's the hardest way to grow your digital marketing agency. Um, so what I'm going to do on today's session, my session is the ultimate agency funnel. How to get clients coming to you without having to cold call and sit in, in networking meetings because I hated doing that as we grow our agency. And our model, the way it runs today, we don't have to do it at all. And I want to show you guys how to do the same. So here's my promise. I'm going to show you the exact funnel and lead generation process we used to grow our multiple seven-figure digital marketing agency. And I'm going to show you a system that it followed We'll get clients coming to you on a consistent basis, pre-positioned to buy. How does that sound as we kind of wrap up the TNC here on day three? So when, when we run agencies, there, there's a challenge, there's a problem. The fact is, it's hard to get clients. And it's hard to get clients because there's so much competition. There's major corporations like Scorpion and Reach Local and Yodel. You guys all familiar with these guys? And they've got massive budgets, they've got big sales teams. And then pretty much anybody that has a laptop and a cell phone connection can call themselves a digital marketing agency. And so your prospects, the people you want to serve, the people you want to sell, are being bombarded. They're getting calls every day. They're getting hundreds of emails in their inbox. So it's really hard to get their attention. To further that, because most of us have been taught to land clients by cold calling and by networking, most of the time we have to chase the prospects down, right? We've got to cold call them. We've got to show up at their door. And when we arrive in that way, usually a hard sell ensues, right? Because you chase them, their guard is up. And they're not like with their hand out saying, show me how you can help. They're saying, explain to me why you're the right company, right? And with, with sales resistance comes a low close rate. And a low, low close rate can kill your confidence, right? When you have a low close rate, you usually wind up with an empty calendar because you, you, you lose your belief that when you spend the time with somebody that they're going to buy from you, right? And these challenges ultimately lead to not having enough clients. They're not generating enough revenue. How many of you would agree if you can't solve for landing clients on a consistent basis that you don't have a business, right? And really the fear here is that you'll have to shut your business down. You'll have to close the doors. You'll have to go back and get the, the J-O-B, right? Nobody, nobody wants that. And so I'll, I'll kind of interject my story here a little bit because this was my experience. My first digital marketing agency, I started back in 2004, and it failed miserably. I was right out of high school. I decided, well, you know, I, I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to, you know, grow a business. And so I started a web design and hosting company. 
We would charge like $1,000 to build a website, $50 per month. And after about four years of beating my head against the wall, cold calling, sitting in B&I meetings, chasing prospects down, building a site, and then going back to the drawing board, building a site, going back to the drawing board, making literally no money, I decided I had to shut the business. And it, and it was a, a very painful process. I learned a lot, but I didn't get the result that I wanted. I had to do what most of us fear most, which is have to go back and get a regular J-O-B. And so I went, I worked at a couple of the, the, big, um, the big companies in, in direct B2B sales. So I worked at like ADP, I worked at uh, a couple of those types of companies, and I, I learned how to sell, which is a pretty valuable skill, right? But I knew I wanted to, I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I, I wanted to be in the internet marketing space. And so I'm a big student, I've always been a big student of the game. Um, how many of you read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Robert Kiyosaki, or um, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind by T. Harv Eker? Love those books. I knew I had to be in business on my own if I wanted to be able to get the, the life that I wanted for myself and my family. But one thing stuck with me uh, from T. Harv, T. Harv Eker's book, and that was to start a business, you don't necessarily have to start the business, right? You can work at a company that's doing well and learn, right? And you might find a niche for yourself. You might find an opportunity to do it correct. And so I started researching, what are the, like, what are the top internet marketing companies out there? What, who are they? And I found a company on the Inc. 500 list at the time called Reach Local. You, I mean, you guys have all heard of Reach Local. Big, bad, $250 million publicly traded company. And I worked there, and I learned a lot, right? One of the biggest things I had to learn was how do you sell local companies, right? How do you charge and get a business model right that, that actually can sustain growth within your business? And I did pretty well. I learned a lot. I learned the lessons that I needed to learn. And I'll kind of share some of these with you guys today. But I was frustrated. The clients I was serving weren't getting great results. I felt like I could do it better, right? I could get them better return on investment. And so after a couple years there, I decided to go back into business on my own. And we started our agency as it sits today. Um, in about two years, we grew it to seven figures. Uh, and today, we're running about $370,000 per month in recurring revenue. We made the Inc. 5000 list the last three years in a row. Um, we have a real team, a real bricks and mortar office in Doral. Um, we try and keep it fun. My, my business partner, Dean, is up here in the front. He designs all kinds of fun stuff. So if you're ever in South Florida, come check us out. It, it, it's a mostly millennial staff, so we try and make it fun. And there's a picture of Dean and I at, at the Inc. 5000 Gala, just celebrating the success. And so I don't, I don't really share that to brag. Really, I just want to share that's where I was, and there was something that changed in my business model and in my strategy that moved our company forward, that helped us to accomplish that result. And to me, that shift was a transition from chasing clients down to getting clients to come to us. When we made that shift and we started positioning ourselves as the expert, that's when everything changed. And, and that's what I want for you guys. I want to show this exact model to you so you can do the same in your agency. And when you get this right, you start to get clients coming to you pre-positioned to buy. And when they come and when they arrive in that way, the sales resistance drops. Can you guys see the distinction? If they saw a video of you, or if they sat on a webinar of yours, or if they read your book, and they're coming to you, they're like, hey, tell me what you can do. The position isn't this, it's this, right? So there's very low sales resistance. It's more like, how much is this going to cost, and how soon can we get started? You get plenty of appointments, and really what you get is momentum and consistent growth within your agency. Ultimately, you can truly build a successful business that serves your desired lifestyle and helps you to have a true impact in your local economy. Is it okay with you guys if I just share a couple of the business model fundamentals that I learned before we dive into the funnel? So the first is one target niche, right? As digital marketers, we can serve almost anybody, right? We can serve the dentist, the lawyer, the e-commerce shop. But when you do it that way, it's hard to land clients because they still want to deal with an expert, right? They want to deal with someone that serves companies like theirs. Every time you get a client that's different, you have to reinvent the wheel. So it's very hard to systematize. Being a generalist 
not only is harder to sell, but it's much harder to scale. Michael King did a great presentation yesterday. He focuses on eye doctors and Invisalign care. Another great example of why being in a niche is really the best way not just to land clients and grow, but to get extremely good at generating results and systematizing that so that you can do it again and again for your clients. <laughs> I believe recurring revenue is the only way to go. I did it the hard way, and now I'm doing it the easy way. For years, I was project-based. I would sell a website, and then I would sell another website. And even if I sold five clients in any given month at $1,000 to $2,000, it was just enough to cover the expenses, and I was always back to the drawing board. Working at Reach Local, I had one thing to sell, and that was recurring revenue. Right? I would go into the client, and I would present $2,500 a month, $5,000 a month, and when you're selling a recurring projects every single time, that's when you get massive momentum and massive scale within your business. So no one-off projects, no check payments, no partial deposits, and a minimum of $1,000 per month. Now this number might be small for a lot of you, but when I was running my, my, my first business, my mind couldn't wrap around the concept that people would pay more than $500 per month for internet marketing services. Like literally, I was like, oh man, I can't charge that much. But working at Reach Local, seeing literally hundreds and thousands of reps selling five, six, $10,000 a month projects, my mindset changed. And when you're dealing in those numbers, 1,000 plus, $2,500 plus, you can really get to a level of significance quite a bit faster. I find that agencies are, are somewhere in these five stages of growth. So we've got startup, struggle, scale, success, and significance. And there's financial amounts for each. But I think something really magical happens when you get to significance. Sorry. When you get to significance. That's where you've got a seven-figure digital marketing agency. You're doing at least $83,000 per month. You have financial resources to live your desired lifestyle. You have the freedom because you can develop a team to do the work for you and not have to do it all yourself. And you're having an impact, right? You're serving a lot of clients. You're building a team and you're pouring into that team. And so, I, I mean, I really, my, my personal mission is to help as many digital marketing agencies get to seven figures as possible because it's had such an impact on my life. I'm able to really spend the time with the people that mean the most to me. I'm not the Ferrari guy, I'm not the Hawaii trip guy, but I've got a six-year-old and a three-year-old, and that's what I'm passionate about, spending time with them. And, and being at this level gives me the ability to put my son in the, in the good school, to drive the nice car, have the nice house, but most importantly, spend the time with them, where I don't have to work 60 hours a day, but I have the freedom to take the trips and to live the travels a week. So, Pat the seven figures. Sometimes I say that's, my, that's my, my, my mission. People say, well, seven figures. I've been doing this for 20 years. I'm nowhere near seven figures. The fact is, if you can land four or five clients per month at at least $1,000 per month in recurring revenue, probably takes you only about 15 to 20 qualified strategy sessions per month to get there. You can get to $83,000 in monthly recurring revenue which is a seven-figure agency in somewhere between one and three years. Is that feasible for everybody in the room? Bottom line, if you can land five clients a month at $13.50 per month, you can grow a seven-figure agency in just 12 months. So hopefully that puts it into a box that's like, okay, this is a, a really a tangible, achievable thing. And if nothing else, I'd like you guys to leave this session with a like a, a more specific idea of how you can get there. So I just want to pause for a second. I'd like you guys to think, because I think the why is so powerful. Just think for a second, why is it important to you to build an agency of significance? Why is it important to you to build a strategy to get clients coming to you pre-positioned to buy? And so if you've got a notepad, if you're typing notes onto your phone, or if you're like me, you're writing on your iPad, I just want to give you a second to think about that. Okay, so now on to the topic at hand, landing clients. We've got so many great ideas on how we can serve our clients here, right? 
How many of you guys have pages of notes on ideas how to serve the clients, get them through SEO and pay-per-click and social media? But how do we get clients for ourselves? And what I find is most digital marketing agencies are so excited about serving their clients and learning these things, but they never apply it to themselves, right? We don't eat our own dog food. So there's a couple ways. There's cold outreach, which is cold calling, sitting, you know, dropping in at the office. And this is kind of the, the, the first way most people start to land clients. Uh, there's marketed lead generation, running Facebook ads, pay-per-click ads, right? There's joining the associations and speaking. And this really becomes an option when you're niche focused. Like we serve plumbing and HVAC contractors. I think I said that, right? When you serve a specific niche, you can join the association. You can position yourself as the expert. You can get opportunities to speak at the front of the room. Then there's JVs. That's finding people that are already selling to the clients you want to serve, that already have those relationships, and getting them to introduce you to their client base. And then there's, there's inbound marketing, right? That's getting clients to come to you by putting out great content. And what I found is that all of these are viable ways to generate leads to land clients and to grow your agency. I truly believe if you can get good at just two of these strategies, you can definitely get to seven figures in two to, two to three years. But the one I really wanna focus on, because it's the one that's worked best for us, is inbound marketing. And so I'm gonna unpack the ultimate agency funnel, right? <clears throat> How we can get those clients coming to us. And it really boils down to five key principles. The first is you need to make sure that you start with the end in mind, right? They always tell us, start with the end in mind. And so as we look to build a funnel to get clients come, to come to us, we have to really think about what we want them to do before they hire us or what the steps would be. And really, what, we, what do we want? We want them to hire us for a monthly retainer of $1,000 or more in monthly recurring. And so with that in mind, we can map out the flow. What are the, the minimum level of steps that they would need to take in order to get to that place where they're signing a monthly recurring agreement? I think we can all agree they would need to probably opt in for something and raise their hand, and then they would need to meet with us one-on-one -on -one for a strategy session, and then they need to sign the agreement, right? So we've got to start by baiting the hook, putting together a lead magnet that they can opt in for something that they would actually want, and then offer a shortcut. We hear a lot about lead magnets, especially here at the TNC, lead magnets. Things to get people's attention, it's people to get the opt-in. I'm gonna unpack what I think is the most important aspect of your funnel, and that's the shortcut. What you do immediately after they opt in for whatever it is that you offered them. So we're gonna unpack that. And then we have to follow up on all fronts. So once they've opted in, we have to really be aggressive with our follow-up via email, via text message, via phone, and when we do that, we can really, really start to get clients coming to us. So this is the, this is the ultimate agency funnel. And you'll notice it's not 19 steps, it's just three steps, right? Three simple steps. A clear niche or target. And I can't underscore the importance of this. You could have the best funnel in the world. You could have all kinds of cool lead magnets. You could have videos and guides and everything else. But if it's not written or directed at a very specific audience, nobody wants it. Nobody's going to opt in for it. And I can tell you that clear audience isn't small businesses. It isn't e-commerce. It's something very specific, very tactical. It's restaurants, potentially. It's LASIK eye centers. It's plumbing and HVAC contractors. So, I mean, if you can get clear on your target, then you just gotta map the funnel and put out stuff that's really interesting for them. So the opt-in, what we found to be really effective is a, is a simple checklist. I used to have, before I joined uh, War Room years ago, I used to have a 53-page guide. I called it the Complete Guide to Internet Marketing for Plumbing and HVAC Contractors. And while that's impressive, it's not very digestible, right? And what Ryan and his team kind of beat into my head is that the best lead magnet is something that's very simple, something that's very, like, I could probably consume that in five minutes or less. 
and, and people are more apt to jump on that. And so the simple cheat sheet worked really well for us. The second step is you wanna have the appointment funnel, which is where we get them onto our calendar so we can have the strategy session, which is ultimately gonna make them a client. And so this is where that shortcut comes into play. I'll talk about that more as we go. And then the third critical piece of the funnel, in my mind, is the hot lead follow-up. We spend so much time generating leads, getting people to raise their hand, ideally conducting strategy sessions, but we spend very little time thinking about what happens after that strategy session. So how often do we meet with a prospect that was interested in doing business with us, and we're like, okay, great, I'm gonna send over the proposal, and it goes, it goes kind of dead. Right? Have you guys experienced that where it kind of goes dead? Having a hot lead follow-up, which is just a pre-thought, engineered follow-up mechanism after that strategy session, can, I think, double or triple the conversion rate on your strategy sessions. And for us, it's just a series of emails that they get. Hey, thanks for your time. Here's the agreement. Hey, here's some examples and case studies. Hey, um, here's what you can expect to happen next. Hey, we ran this report, I'd love to jump on a call. And ultimately, hey, it's been two weeks, we agreed we'd come to a decision one way or the other. Can we jump on a quick call to discuss next steps? Right, and if you've got that pre-thought out and pre-engineered, it can really help. The other thing is don't forget about, um, don't forget about direct mail as it relates to this. They're getting lots of emails, they're getting lots of text messages, they're getting lots of calls, but they're not getting that much in the mail. I'm a big fan of actually mailing something, a shock and awe box, right after that, that first conversation. So we get them to opt in. We want them to schedule an appointment. One of the most important things we need to do is offer a shortcut. And this made everything we were doing from a lead generation perspective exponentially more effective. Because most of the time, we get somebody to opt in, and then we send them to a thank you page that's like, hey, we sent it over to you, it's gonna be in your inbox, right? The shortcut is what happens right here in the middle. It should be a video of you saying, hey, thanks for requesting that guide. It's gonna be great, you're gonna love it. If you're like, like most plumbing or HVAC contractors, you like to get these PDFs, these reports, but really you just want someone to implement this for you, right? And if that's you, I'd like to offer you the opportunity to schedule a time, and I'll actually look at your website, I'll look at your online marketing strategy, be able to show you how we can help. If you don't have a simple shortcut like that in place, you're missing out on the big opportunity. Because when someone opts in, you've got their undivided attention. They're interested in what you have to say. And so you wanna offer them that shortcut to get to what you really want, which is for them to get on your schedule. Because that's where you can sell them. Does that make sense? Good. So I'm just gonna show a, a, an example of this. So our, our checklist that we run for plumbing and HVAC contractors, this was just over the last 30 days, had 117 opt-ins. If we look at this throughout the course of a year, about 12,000 plumbing or HVAC companies opted in, 249 strategy sessions, and 52 new clients, all at a monthly recurring fee for us of about $2,500 per month or more. So, that's about $129,000 in monthly recurring revenue from a simple three-step funnel. Does that, because what I think is a lot of times we overcomplicate it. We think we need more stuff. We think we, we need more steps. We think we need to overcomplicate the process. Just get three basic funnels in place and you can truly accelerate your business. So I just want you guys to, to kind of look at your current funnel as it sits today. Just kind of spend a couple seconds internalizing this. What do you have? Do you have an opt-in funnel? Do you have a, a shortcut that they can tap into? Do you have sequences in place to move them to the appointment? And then of course to move them to a client? So I just want to give you guys a second to pause and kind of write some notes and work on this. So let's dive into the, into the opt-in a little bit further. We've got our lead magnet. Again, a cheat sheet or a checklist works best. We also need a hero image. This is a visual representation 
of your checklist, right? And it needs to be something that someone would look at and kind of say, okay, I want that. I want to download that and get my hands on it. So kind of like turn it sideways, make it three-dimensional, make it feel like a widget that they can actually get their hands on. You need an opt-in page and the confirmation page. We all know how to make an opt-in page. We all know how to do the thank you page, but just making sure that you've set up a thank you page with a video that moves them to the next step in the process, which is the strategy session. And then we want a follow-up sequence, right? And I wrote email sequence, but really it should be more than that. It should be email, it should be text message, it should be reminders from your staff. Because if they've opted in, we wanna try and get them on the phone and into our calendar. So some of the tech, because I, I know when I come to these kind of sessions, <clears throat> I like to know what people use to kind of build all this stuff and make it work. So for us, we use ClickFunnels, very simple, opt-in page, thank you page. Email me form is an application where we can pre-screen people a little bit. So after they opt in, instead of just taking them straight to the calendar, we ask some questions. You know, how much revenue are you doing? What's your current investment in online advertising? And we find that gives us a way to filter people before they get to our schedule. We use Infusionsoft or Keep to send the emails and do the automation. Uh, fix your funnel for the text messages and voice broadcasts. Um, and then of course our, our websites are built in WordPress. We're able to embed all of this stuff onto the site. So I'll leave that up for a second if anybody wants to snap a photo. If you, come, I, I, if you come back and see me, I'll, I'll make sure you guys can get your hands on the slides. So key, key elements of the appointment funnel, right? This is, where, this is where the opportunity lives, right? We're not creating content for the sake of creating content. We're creating content for the sake of getting people that are interested in what we can do on our calendars. So you need to make sure you've got that video confirmation. Should be autoplay. You can do it pretty simply in ClickFunnels, Wistia, YouTube. Should link out to your calendar. Lots of cool calendar systems out there these days. Calendly, Appointment Core, Schedule Once. Um, we use Calendly, or at least I use Calendly. I, I really like it. It's easy to tag and be able to track where people are in the process. Uh, the pre-appointment questionnaire, I think that's more optional. Like for us, we get lots and lots of leads, and sometimes they're not the exact quality prospect we want to deal with. And so we ask them some questions through a form to pre-qualify them. I think if you're not inundated with leads, you're better served just to let them schedule and then screen them after the fact. But um, that's what we use for, for that piece. And then really important is, a, is an indoctrination email. So they, they opted in. They decided they're gonna schedule a time to chat with us. Really, really, really wanna drop something on them before that meeting that positions you as the unquestioned expert in their type of business. So for us, that's a case study how this plumbing company generated 329 leads in the last 30 days, right? And I try and pepper case study and interview right before the appointment. So if they're scheduled for Tuesday at three o'clock, 8 a.m. that morning, they get an email, hey, super excited about our session today. Before we meet, I'd like to have you watch this case study because it'll help you get a sense of what's possible and how we can help, right? Do you think they'd be more apt or more pre-positioned to buy if they saw something like that right before the appointment? So you want to kind of engineer that into the process. And don't forget about SMS confirmation. Well, we used to just use email for this, and I mean, at least 70% of the time, the person wouldn't show up for the appointment. How many of you guys have had that where you, you, you have people schedule in on your calendar and they just, they flake out on you at the last minute? So we find sending text message really helps. Morning of text message, five minutes before, hey, don't forget, we're gonna be meeting this afternoon, it's gonna be awesome. Make sure you have that in place. And then make it super simple that they can just pick a time and a date that works for them. That's gonna put in right on your schedule. And then the third one is that, is that hot lead follow-up. Again, that's your, your follow-up sequence after the call. You meet with the person, they're like, oh dude, this sounds great. It's 2,500 bucks, perfect, let's do it, right? Okay, okay well, let me get the credit card, right? And then they say, well, let me, let me, look, at the, let me look at the information Let's, let's kind of talk about, let me, let me get back to my, my partners and I'll get back to you. I wish I could say I was a first time close guy. I'm not great at that. I'm not probably that talented of a salesperson. But what I tend to do on these calls is say, hey, not a problem at all. Um, what information would you need? And they say, oh, if you could send me something that explains what we talked about. Okay, great. You know, could we agree that we'll, we'll come to a decision sometime in the next two weeks? 
And they always say, absolutely, yeah, yeah. And then you, you want to calendarize that right then. Okay, great, let's put it on the calendar so we can have our next conversation to move things forward. But when you engineer it in that way, you can have two weeks worth of emails, kind of moving them, not with a hard deadline because it's hard to create fabricated scarcity, but just we, just we agreed that we would come to a business decision within two weeks. So you can kind of engineer that into your follow-up emails. You want to send a shock and awe box. And this isn't as hard as it looks. Like if you published a book, if you've got case studies, if you've got audios that you've done, just have, have a package together with a cover letter, some additional resources. That way, a couple days later, as they're pretty much deciding that they want to do business with you, something arrives in their mail via FedEx or via USPS. And they feel like, wow, that's impressive. Like, that's what I can expect from this company. Really helps. And you can have a service facilitate this for you. So, you know, Dean and I made our, our shock and awe box, what was it, like five years ago, four years ago? And it was pretty much set it and forget it. There's a company out of Wichita, Kansas, and there's lots of companies like this that warehouse our book, they warehouse our CDs, and they print on demand. So it's literally a tag in Infusionsoft, send the hot lead follow-up, they package it, they mail it, and we get an invoice at the end of every month. One of the most powerful things we do to move people to the buying decision. So definitely want to make sure you, you put that in place. So those are, those are the three steps. Just want to have you guys pause for a minute. There's some of the key insights. Make sure you've got these things written down and you take a moment to pause and to process. And now I want, to, I want to talk about probably the most important part, which is filling the funnel, right? Okay, great, you showed me a simple three-step funnel. That seems like it'd be great. But you could have the best funnel in the world, and if prospects aren't getting into it, it's worthless, right? So this is really where the money's made, is how do we fill the funnel? And what I often find is, as agencies, we wind up with some kind of list, right? If we're doing cold email, if we're doing cold outreach, we scrape people within our database. If we're smart, we join the association, right? And we get their list of members. Uh, we probably do some type of marketed lead generation, Facebook ads, pay-per-click advertising. And all of those prospects wind up sitting in our database, Infusionsoft or ActiveCampaign or Agile CRM, one of those systems, and they go flat, right? We've got our sequences set up and we send two or three emails or maybe five or six emails, but if they didn't buy, they're just kind of sitting there, right? And it's a dead list. How many of you were in Frank Kern's session this morning? I love Frank Kern. I'm, a, again, a big student of the game. I think it was like six or seven years ago, I was at the super conference, Dan Kennedy conference, and Frank Kern was up on the stage. And one of his big shining insights at the moment was, the money isn't in your list, it's in your relationship to the list probably pretty congruent with what he was talking about a little bit earlier today, right? Creating social content, getting people to know, like, and trust you, right? So if we've got all of these prospects that could potentially buy from us or are probably in our niche, how can we create that relationship with the list? What I found is you want to be touching your database at least two to three times per week. And some of you gasp and say, two to three times? Jeez, I don't even touch them once a month. With deliverability rates the way that they are, and with the amount of emails that people get, if you're only sending one email per month to your database, they're not seeing you. You're not remaining top of mind. You can't develop any relationship with the list. So I really, you have to be touching them more frequently. You have to add value. So these can't just be, hey, want to talk about internet marketing? Hey, can you handle another five to six leads a month? They have to be value-added information. You've got to be helping them in some way. You've got to nurture the database, and you've got to offer to help. As I was sitting there listening to Frank this morning, I was like, man, that's, that's just exactly what he was saying, right? You create content. You position, and you add value. You're not just trying to sell. You're adding value so they start to know, like, and trust you. And when you do that on a consistent basis, and you asked and you offered to help, that's the critical piece. You can't just give information and be like, well, hopefully they'll connect the dot someday. You give that information, and it always ends with, 
Now, if you'd like some help implementing this, give us a call. Let's schedule a time to talk. Or go to this page and let's download our checklist. And when you do that on a consistent basis, that's how you start to get clients. That's how you get consistent growth and momentum. But that's a lot of work, right? We've got to come up with two or three emails a week, and then we've got to come up with valuable content. How many of you would like a shortcut? Everybody wants a shortcut, right? I found a great shortcut for this. Because in my process, like, yeah, I know I need to touch the database. Yeah, I know I need to add value. But I, I mean, I can't stop once a week and shoot a Facebook Live video and then have that sent out. Ultimate shortcut for me. Monthly topical webinars are the ultimate content lever for your agency growth. I'm gonna kinda explain why that is and how it, how it works. I'm not talking about you doing the same webinar every month. I'm talking about taking the good ideas that you get from a conference like this and doing a specific webinar every month on a different topic. Forces you to create new content. Really, it has a powerful ability to do two things. To grow your database and to nurture your database. So grow your database because you're doing a webinar, right? You're creating video which can be syndicated in a variety of ways that can then be found online, all bringing people into the top of your funnel. And it can also nurture your database because you've got those 5,000 or 6,000 or 10,000 people sitting in your database that you need to touch. Because you're doing a webinar, you can email them about it. You can send them the replay. It forces you to create new content. Does that make sense to everybody? So to get more, more specific, it's a reason to email the database multiple times. You can invite them to the webinar. You can remind them, hey, the webinar's about to start. And then you can send them the replay after, at a very minimum. We probably touch them more than that every time we do a webinar. We drive multiple sources of content. So one video, you've got the live webinar that happens, and some people actually sit and watch that. Um, you can take the video, upload it into YouTube. Bonus, and this is kind of a, a hack that we've found that is just extremely effective. You can take a 45-minute webinar and slice it into five or six segments. So let's say you did a webinar on how to use chatbots, right? And it had five key points, point one, point two, point three, point four. Each one of those points is almost like a little mini vignette. So you take, you take your 45 minute thing, you splice it up into five different videos, and you can upload that into YouTube with different keyword naming and titling. This is all different and all unique, and you just end it in a strategic way. You end it with, with hey, you know, if you found this useful and you'd like more ideas and strategies on how to grow your limo company, go to mysite.com slash guide or mysite.com slash free, and I've got all kinds of great strategies that will help you grow your limo business. Right? So you, you create that content. You can take the, the video, put it on a blog, have it transcribed. You can take the audio from your webinar, the audio file, and upload it into iTunes, and now you've got a podcast. You can take the slides and put them up on SlideShare. You can leverage social media to get people to register for the webinar, to get people to watch the replay. Ultimately, one webinar per month really gives you the ability to touch your database at least three times and create six plus pieces of unique content that becomes inbound marketing fodder for your funnel. Is that a cool hack? The other thing is we talked about it, it's not about the list, it's about the relationship to the list. Right? We want that list to think we're omnipresent. And by promoting a webinar, you're in their inbox because they're seeing it. They're, you're on their social feed because ideally you're posting it to social, you're doing some boosted posts to your, to your actual database. And they feel like they're seeing you everywhere, but not in an obnoxious way. Not in a, hey, let's schedule a time to talk, but in a, look, here's a cool idea, here's a cool strategy, here's how you can do better online. So really the key insight is that one new webinar per month can drive your entire content lead generation machine. And I want to offer you guys one more hack. Can I, show you, can I give you guys one more hack before we wrap up? I want to show you how to get qualified appointments even if your prospects don't sit on the webinar. So ideally, when you promote your webinar, 
there's a registration page, right? Hey, I have a webinar on this particular topic. I did one recently on Google local service ads, which is really popular in the plumbing and HVAC trade. And then, of course, you've got the thank you video. Thanks for registering for the webinar. You found this useful. I mean, if you, thanks for registering for the webinar. You're going to find it awesome. But if you're like most plumbing and HVAC contractors, you like to understand what's going on with this stuff, but really you just want someone that can implement it for you, you can do that same shortcut when they register for your webinar. And what I found is you can schedule more appointments with people that register for the webinar but never attend than if you waited until after the webinar hoping that they watched the whole thing and scheduled a time on your calendar. I'll show you an example, because it sounds like nonsense. Here's the deal. That webinar I just showed you had 193 people registered. 58 of them watched that video and filled out my pre-appointment questionnaire. 19 of them scheduled appointments. If I didn't have the pre-screening piece, I would have had probably about 50 people on my calendar from that webinar that had never watched the webinar. So I really want you to get this. We spend so much time trying to come up with the perfect webinar. What's the right slides? What's the right content? How do I make sure you know, that I don't embarrass myself with this? Most people don't attend webinars or even watch the replay. How many of you guys register for webinars and never sit on the live thing? <laughs> and you guys are here, you're digital marketers, you're students of the game. Your clients run million dollar companies, ideally, right? Million dollar plus companies, they're busy. They've got employees, they've got lots going on. They will register for webinars, but they almost certainly will not watch the webinar. Your best prospects aren't going to watch, and they're not going to attend. The webinar itself isn't that big a deal. It's the promotion of the webinar and offering a fast shortcut. I hope this, this hack is sinking in for you guys. You don't have to come up with awesome webinars. It will help. It will create inbound opportunities. But just promoting great webinars on a consistent basis really drive things for you. So I'm just going to kind of show you, this is how we set up our webinars. Um, again, if you want to come back and see me, I'm glad to share these, these slides with you. Um, we do our webinars with Zoom. Our opt-in funnel is, is built on ClickFunnels. So thank you page, replay page. That way we can pixel everybody. We can track people all the way through our funnel. Um, for promotion, we send emails and we do Facebook marketing. So five or six emails letting them know there's a great webinar coming up on this particular topic. Um, Facebook ads not into the ether, but to the people that are on our database. So they're seeing it in their feed as well as in their inbox. Uh, we send at least two emails after the webinar letting them know, hey, it's, it's done. You can go watch it here. And then we syndicate it out on YouTube, SlideShare, the blog, and the website. So this slide, everyone's going to glaze over. But ultimately, these are the steps to do this on a consistent basis. This is how you prepare for the webinar, and this is how you syndicate it for maximum impact. And again, come back and see me if you'd like, if you'd like that. So I want to give you some, some next steps, because I would be remiss if I just came up here and talked and, and really didn't give you some action items and some things to do next. So here's what I want you to do. I want to make sure that you set up your three funnels, right? Our appointment funnel, our opt-in funnel, our appointment funnel, and our hot lead follow-up. And I want you all to commit to monthly webinars. Put your hand up if you can commit to, to doing webinars that no one will probably attend. <laughs> you could all do that, right? And then really, the most important thing, I need you to mark this on your calendar. Pick your next three webinars and put it on your calendar. There's two types of learning. There's just-in-time learning and there's just-in-case learning. Almost all of us love to do just-in-case learning. That's like, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to study webinars. I'm going to think about how to set up my slides. I'm going to research what the right webinar flow is. I'm going to kind of read about it. Just in case one day I do a webinar, right? Just in case learning is almost useless. It's information that's Then there's just in time learning. That's, I've got a webinar coming up on Thursday at 2 o'clock next week. I've already sent a couple emails. I've already got people registered. When you do that, you have to dive into just-in-time learning. That's where it's like, OK, how do I set up my slides? How do I get this going? And you get it ready just in time. 
I find the more you can do just-in-time learning as opposed to just-in-case learning, the more action you take, the better results you get. So please, mark it on your calendar, commit to your first webinar, and get it into play, and really don't, don't overthink it. And I'll just leave you with this. You can build a seven-figure agency with a simple three-step funnel. You should be running more promotions. Promotions for your guides, promotions for your cheat sheets, promotions for your checklists, promotions for webinars that people may or may not watch. Don't overthink the content. And definitely don't let it stop you from putting stuff out. Make sure you offer that shortcut. After they opt in, that's where the appointments happen. Right after the opt in, offer them the appointment. One new topical webinar on a monthly basis can drive your entire content and lead engine. And if you can land just five clients per month at 1,300 per month average, you can build a seven figure agency in just 12 months. Thank you.